Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to America. Thank you. That's a good thing, isn't it? It is. It's good to see each of you this morning. And we're truly blessed to live in a free country and to be able to be at this church today. And it's always good to see you folks. Uh, glad to be alive after my bee attack yesterday. One bee took me down. Just one bee. I'm telling you, when a bee this big could take you down, that's a, that's a tough bee. We had that too. Yeah, he said he got one too. Yes. I guess the yellow jackets are in the ground a little bit now, so be careful because yes. they have an attitude. They have a real attitude. You know, we I need. Have a big yellow oh, well, I may have one if I get too many of them. I don't like them. But uh, pray for people out working outside because, you know, they face that every day. And uh, I'm just a weekend warrior. I mow once every week. That's it. Uh, let's lift up the announcements we have this morning. Got any special announcements? It's not a special announcement, but we're coming to the end of this cycle of our reader program. And I'm going to set up another cycle. So anybody who's not on our schedule and would like to be on the schedule, please let me know and I'll insert you. Anybody that's in the schedule and wants to get off, let me know and I'll not include you in the next schedule. Okay. So we're coming to the, towards the end of this particular schedule. Just, just let me know if you want to stay in, or, uh, if you want to get in, or if you want to get off. Thank you, Tom. Take care of that. Any other announcements? We discussed in Sunday school last week about being partners with East School. And I talked with the principal about children that are needy for supplies, and she was thrilled to death that we would take this project on and get some extra things. So we need to decide an amount, and Missy and I will go this afternoon, and while it's still tax-free, and get the things she said they could use anything from hand sanitizer, color brands, paper. And there's all backpacks. She said there's always children that come. Well, certain, certainly important because I know a lot of families can't afford to buy some of that stuff. And it falls back on the teachers who don't make a lot of money anyway. So we need to help them as much as we can. Y'all can, if y'all want to discuss that in between, y'all can get your money set, whatever, now, it don't matter. Well, we can kind of discuss it after Yeah, church. that's what I mean. Y'all just set that and take care of it. If I can help in any way, I'll be glad to. Anyone else? Well, a lot of our teachers are still got getting that last weekend in. I know uh, Kat and was gone this river this weekend, but pray for those that are out traveling and be back to school. Some of them's already started school, I think. Henderson County started to pre deal, so pray for it. Watch out for the kids out traveling because they're everywhere once that school starts, so be careful traveling. Anyone else? This afternoon, uh, you're all invited at 4 o'clock to the ice cream supper at uh, Brown's, and uh, their main goal is, is to get some ideas about, uh, they've had some money donated to the church, actually a pretty good amount uh, from uh, Mrs. Spain estate. Uh, was left some money to them. They're going to try to do some, uh, try to do some things about the future of the church. And y'all might, y'all might be able to help them as far as be part of that. So, please, if you want to come, if not, just come and eat ice cream. I mean, that's a, that that'd be worth it. You know, I've been to a lot of places. I may not necessarily want to be part of the meeting, but I like being part of the ice cream. So y'all can come <laughs> be part of that. I feel like I do my part. So at four o'clock this afternoon, you're all invited, especially anybody that has any connection to the community or or the church is the brown. So. Anyone else? We're leaving Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Be back Wednesday and then go again Thursday with the silver, whatever they're called, silver travelers or something up there at the Browns. So pray for me. I tell you, that bus is starting to, that seat's starting to fit way too, too good. So, but we're going to be going to Eureka Springs to see the Passion Play. And uh, if you've never been, I'd love for us to go sometime as a church we could. It's a, it's a great experience and it's a great opportunity. But they're going uh, now before school starts back, I guess, because that's what we're doing. But, but pray for us in our travels. But if you need me, you can still call me. I'll have my phone with me. I'll be glad to respond to you. Anyone else? It's good to have Miss Nancy with us today. And uh, 
really enjoyed our beautiful flowers last week. They were just so pretty, and thank you for doing that. Anyone else? Okay, if not, let's begin our service. Uh, number 89, the song of praise, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. We invite you to stand, those who are able. Number 89. crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now our scripture reading. Here we have Psalm 105, verses 1 through 11. Give thanks to the Lord for praying His greatness. Let the whole world know what He has done. Sing to Him, yes, sing His praises. Tell everyone about His wonderful deeds. Exalt in His holy name. Rejoice you who worship the Lord. Search the Lord for all His strength. Continually seek Him. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles, and the rulings he has given. You children of his servant Abraham, you descendants of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord, our God. His judgment is seen throughout the land. He always stands by his covenant, the commitment he made to a thousand generations. This is the covenant he made with Abraham and the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree and to the people of Israel as never-ending covenant. I will give you the land of Canaan as your special possession. There be the Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Master Usher's coming out to see what more to offer. Any joys this morning? This beautiful day. Amen. Beautiful day. Yesterday was beautiful too. It was nice and a little bit cooler, the breeze blowing. It was really nice. Football. It was good what? Football. Oh yeah, good, good football weather. Absolutely. I even thought about golf weather. I like that kind of weather for golf. It's been so long since I played though. And I'm sure I could even see the ball if I was looking for it down there. But maybe so. <laughs> Anybody else have a joy? Air conditioning got fixed. Yes. Good. And my oldest granddaughter got engaged. All right. The air conditioner made everybody happy, didn't it? You tell her. It's hard. I, we've had folks that didn't have air conditioning. It's rough. Anyone else? Joys. Glad to have our visitors here today. You're not visitors, we're just glad to have you back with us. Okay, what about our prayer concerns this morning? Remember the Jack Ramsey family? Um, they live in Humboldt. His wife, Mary, died this morning. And uh, y'all may know Suzanne Allison, that was her mother. Anyone else? And my dear friend Bobby Mac Robinson, who I was in business with many, many years ago, um, died last Wednesday. I'm so sorry. Okay, anyone else? Uh, continued prayers for Trace um, Stanford, to he's must have heard he's out of intensive care and he's doing better, but he's, he's still in the hospital. Okay. Imagine. Remember Chase. Anyone else? Billy is going to the doctor this week and might, they might do a procedure on his legs. The one doctor thinks they possibly could. But it's difficult. Okay, bye. Billy, we'll keep you in our prayers. Anyone else? Tammy did go back to the doctor this week. It was one of our trips this week to Memphis. And um, her bone is still not healed back. And they're probably going to have to do a surgery to go in and take part of that bone out. So 
So if they do, it should be down like four weeks. But uh, we're seeing some options we can do besides that. But she is not happy about that. And but the, we did. Uh, Lori found a place to live yesterday. So we're kind of excited about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm trying not to be too excited about it, but you know, I mean, we're glad she got a place, and, and uh, uh, we're glad the Lord let us take care of her for almost two years. So anyway, she got a place, and uh, it's an interesting deal. But we got her place, so pray for her. Anyone else? Pray for me as I travel this week, driving with another group. It's always a Pray for Tom. He's got a long trip. Yeah, Tom is going to uh, way east coast, right? Seattle. Oh, Seattle, the other side. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know the difference. I just. I was thinking. I, I don't know why I thought she was in Pennsylvania. Yeah. I thought. It, I thought you said Pennsylvania. I'm sorry. Seattle. Okay. So let's say our granddaughter is back from Guatemala, and she did have a good trip. Good. They're both home now. I'm so proud she's back home. Yeah, my son-in-law's back too. He's been in South Africa for three weeks. He's back uh, with military maneuvers. And so he's, he's back and um, glad to have him back with my daughter. She gets a little bit anxious when he's gone, so. Pray for all of our military service men and women. Anyone else? Debbie Wilson, our niece, is still having her treatments and it was rough this week. She's still trying to work. Sweet, sweet lady. For all the teachers that are getting ready for school. Teachers. And students, too. Anyone else? We had an interesting yesterday. We carried uh, um, Lori to where she's going to live at in Tipton, Tiptonville is where it's at, Tipton County. Yeah, yeah, right around Real Foot's where it's at. And uh, we was we was going to let her stay for a couple of hours and bring her back, but she ended up deciding that she wanted to stay. So anyway, we were at uh, uh, Boyette's, and I heard something sound like a airplane trying to land. I thought, what was that? And uh, we were in back of the restaurant, and uh, a lady had turned. To go in the restaurant and the guy was on a motorcycle and she just hit him head on and threw him up on the car but he was a big guy like me and it, it cut him up but didn't hurt him real bad uh, of course it scared the lady to death and uh, I kept sitting there and I said there's so many people out there I hate to go out there and be nosy and all that but I couldn't stand it I said I'm gonna go see if I can help because uh, I used to be in the fire department and all that stuff and so I went out there and the man was okay there's several people take care of him but the woman, bless her heart, she was sitting in the car and had one lady standing there talking to her and she was scared to death. And so I went over, and this way the Lord works, I went over there and, uh, and I said, are you okay? She said, I'm having an anxiety attack. And if you've ever had one of those, that's not fun. And so I took her by the hand, I just held her hand and she would not let my hand go. I'm telling you, she was holding on to me. And I got her name, got her calmed down until the police and the ambulance got there with her. And uh, I told Tammy, I said, well, we." If we'd know Lori wanted to stay, we wouldn't have been there at Boette. So I guess that's the Lord's way of putting us in the right place. But I got a chance to comfort that lady for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But uh, it just pray for her. Her name is Sarah. Uh, I don't know her last name, but I asked her her name and, and uh, prayed with her. And, and uh, she was calmed down the time I left. But she was just so upset, she thought she'd killed that guy. And of course, she didn't, but it, it was really scary. I mean, it would be for anybody. But pray for Sarah. But it's just amazing how God puts you in places. Uh, and I don't think it's by accident. I think it really, God does that. Anyone else have a prayer concern? Okay. If not, let us uh, take just a moment to, um, just a moment of silence to think about all those things we've lifted up and then let us go forth in prayer. God, we just uh, stop just for a moment to think about all these we've lifted up this morning. And dear God, each of them are very precious to us as we know they are to you. And we pray, dear God, for all the sick and afflicted. We pray for people that, uh, Lord, have been in places that they didn't want to be and, Lord, bad things have happened. And we just pray, dear God, for our, our country and for its nation, our leaders. 
each person who is uh, at odds with others, I just pray, Lord, you'll bring them together. Forgive us, dear God, if, uh, and help us uh, be peacemakers in all that we do. And dear God, help our church continue to grow and be an extension of your arm and your hand. And God, as we pray together and as we remind ourselves of how important it is to talk to you daily, we uh, lift up the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is number 177. It says we're going to sing it twice. 177. <clears throat> this old Bible. I don't know. I think they brought it in on the Mayflower, but, it's, it's not, but I really like it. It's kind of like those old Bibles when you open it up and you smell that musky smell. That's not my favorite smell, but I mean, you know, it reminds you of the, the old church and the, the old Bibles, and it just really it just has a special thing for me. Uh, 13th chapter, Matthew, Matthew verse 31. Uh, let us hear these words. Another parable put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field, which indeed in the last of all seed, least of all seeds, but when it grows, it is the greatest among herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable he spake unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a woman who took and had hid in measure of meal until the whole was leavened. And all these spake Jesus into the multitude and the parables. And then in verse 44, it says these words. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to him who hid, hid his treasure in a field, in which he had a man hath, had found, who hideth him for joy thereof, goeth and sell all that he hath, and buyeth that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking godly pearls, and who, when he had found one pearl of the great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a, a net that he cast out in the sea, gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to the shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall be cast them in the furnace of fire. And there will be wailing and gnashing of the teeth. Jesus said to them, Have you understood all these things? They say unto you, Yes, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like to a man that is a house of heaven, a house, householder, which brings forth all his treasure, things new and old. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want us to think about um, 
seeds and opportunities uh, that we have as, as God's people to sow. And you think about the, the mustard seed, you talked about the mustard seed, how small it was and how it would grow to the place it would be, a place even to house uh, the birds and fowls of the air. And that just amazes me uh, of something like that. But you think that uh, he, he used the mustard seed a lot. He says, we have the faith of a grain of mustard seed. We can say in the mountain, be thou removed, and it can be done. Now my question today is, it talks about all these different things where uh, they find something and it's, it's, it's so valuable, they say, well, I'm gonna take all I have and sell, and I'm gonna go buy this land and I, so I can uh, get more of this. Uh, it's almost like the, the gold rush, you know, back uh, many, many years ago, uh, when they heard about, uh, you know, the, they say, hey, there's gold in California. You know, they'd all load up in their wagon trains. Some of y'all probably don't remember that. Y'all probably not old enough to remember that. Uh, but, you know, they'd load up in their wagon trains, they'd head out west, and they'd go, and they would, they, they, some of them would die along the trail, uh, some of them would lose their family, some of them would lose everything they had, just if they could just get to that place where they could have just some of that gold, and they would be rich. I mean, it's, it's almost like uh, a modern day lottery. You know, if you hear that, that somebody's selling lottery tickets and everybody's winning at that store, what do you do? Everybody goes to that store and tries to get uh, the, the goodness from that. And it's like, it's like going fishing. You know, when uh, my brothers and I, we used to go fishing, if one of us caught a fish, what happened? Everybody moved to that place, right? I mean, you've seen it happen. And, and the same way if you're out on the river and you, you catch a big one, you hear somebody make a noise, next thing you know, every boat is sitting around you waiting to see, you know, you caught it. And then if you pull it up and it's about that long, they all leave. But, but you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's amazing how we desire so much from our heart. Uh, but he reminds us, he reminds us there will come a time, though, when there will be a separating from the wheat and from the grain. And that's the part I really want us to hear this morning. It's not as much as about the planting is about the harvest time. Uh, where do we find ourselves? Well, we find ourselves where we're enriched by the worldly things, or we're trying to live out a life that's pleasing for God. It says uh, that one day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And here, as he gives the story of the parable, he reminds us it's only a small seed, but imagine what it can do. Only a small seed. Uh, but when it's sold in the field, it is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it's the greatest among all herbs and becomes a tree that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches. My question for us today, are we still sowing seeds? Are we still sowing seeds? It gets so disheartening, I know each of us do, and we see some of the activities that's going on in our world we live. Uh, we see things happen and we think, my goodness, have people lost their minds? I mean, we say, where is people's morals? Where is, where is their, uh, their ability to understand between right and wrong? And we wonder what is going on? What has happened? Uh, I just seen uh, uh, on social media where there's a church starting up, you know, there's this show on TV called Naked and Afraid. I, I know somebody probably watched that every day, I guess, but, but uh, not me. But, but I, I'm thinking, you know, they turn out these people naked out in the woods, that's crazy number one right there. I mean, my goodness, if I don't wear long sleeves and covered socks and spray all over me, I have mosquitoes will tote me off and have me for buffet out there in the woods, you know. But you know, these people are crazy enough, somebody will film them, so they go out and do this. Well, now there's a church somewhere, and I'm not gonna say where it's at because I can't tell you exactly, uh, but somewhere where the ministers now are, are preaching naked. It's called Naked and Afraid uh, Worship. Now, I'm afraid to go there, aren't you? And, uh, and that, that would be a good way to kill the church, right? I mean, if they said, Brother Steve, you got to preach naked, that would be it. I'm done. You know, and most people would be done too. Uh, but there's so many crazy things going out in the world, and you say, why are these things happening? Well, this is just an example of how the weeds are starting to overtake the good fruit. And it's important for us as God's people to keep planting seed and plant seed that God wants us to plant that will grow and be uh, uh, nourished and encouraged and good behavior comes from that uh, will bring good citizens good Christians all these things but but we somehow have gotten to a place where we have give up on planting seeds and what's happened is the same thing that happens in life today if you don't plant seeds if you don't cultivate the ground uh, I, we've got some fields on our place that we've had to go back and, and what we call um, uh, recapture them. 
uh, reclaim, I think that's the word that we use, Billy, in farming is reclaim the land. Uh, they've got trees growing up in them. The weeds have taken over because of years of not taking care of that field. And so we have to go back in and what do we do? Take out all that stuff, clean the ground, uh, get rid of the weeds, and we start to, to fertilize and build back and plant seeds and, and we plow the rows and we clean between the rows and, and then we have good fruit. But if we let it go, it just becomes overcome with weeds and goes back to a place where it's just a weed field. I wonder sometimes, if we're not careful, our church becomes a weed field with just a few flowers. Uh, my little rock garden beside the parsonage right now is a weed field. Uh, neglected for the last couple of weeks, and it just seems like uh, yesterday I was out, had it all nice and clean, had a few flowers coming up, and I thought, the first cool day, I'm going to get out there one morning, get all that straightened up. I'm still waiting for that cool day. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, maybe by winter time, when the flowers are dead, I can fix it. But I, 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 I let it go for a couple of weeks, and I looked out there, and there is a thing as big as that candle growing up. Maybe a mustard seed, I don't know. But I mean, it looks like the fowl, the air could live in that thing. I mean, it's huge. I'm almost afraid to cut it down, afraid there might be something living in it. You know, because of, just for a couple of weeks, you let it go. Can you imagine what your spiritual life would be like if you just allowed the weeds to grow uh, and didn't take care of yourself? You didn't pray. If you didn't uh, search out the scriptures. If you didn't go to church. If you didn't listen to God's word. Imagine what your life would be like. It would be a field full of weeds. And he reminds us that there will come a time when there will be a, a time of harvest. When the weeds and the fruit will be separated. It always amazed me these machines that can do that. You know, when they you pick corn, it takes and it, it thrashes that out, and the corn falls out one place, and the weeds go out another side, and, and the husks go out somewhere else. And it just amazed me that. Can you imagine if we are, are genius enough to do that in our machinery? Can you imagine what God will do in separation? of the weeds and the good fruit. God is certainly a loving, just God. God is willing to give us all the chances in the world, but he's saying to us, are you planting seeds? If you'll plant the good seed, then I will make sure it grows, I'll make sure it flourishes, and I'll give it the water, I'll give it the spiritual needs that it have. But you gotta keep planting seeds. He says here in verse uh, 24, he says, another parable put forth unto them, saying, kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And we as God's people are trying to sow the good seed, but old Satan never gives up, does he? It says that while they were asleep, his enemy came and sowed tares among his wheat and went his way. But when the blade sprung up, it brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Right there beside each other were the weeds and the fruit. So he's the servants of the household came and said, Sir, what are we going to do? So that there's, there's weeds in the midst of our good seed on the field. From whence hath the tares come? Where did these weeds come from? It's amazing today as we live in, in this world we live. And I said people have lost their minds. It's not they lost their minds. It's they've given in to sin. And when you give in to sin, you do things that are not of the nature of God. Do the things that's not what's God's will. He said here, the enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, wait and gather them up. The tares, you root also the wheat with them. So be careful. If they have grown together, they have become together as one. But he said, Let both grow together to the harvest. In the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in a bundle, and burn them. But then gather the wheat into the barn. And when our time comes, I want to be at that place of the wheat, don't you? I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I want him to say to us, you have been a good seed. You have grown, and you have done the things you were called to do. And for those that are weeds, he says to us, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And what a sad day that is. But I say to you, keep planting seeds. Don't ever stop planting seeds. Don't ever give up. Keep planting seeds because God will give the increase. Even if the weeds grow up among us and there's problems and sin around us, 
God is still able to overcome all that for us through the cross of Jesus. And so he says to us, plant the seeds. Don't ever give up. And know that when the day of harvest shall come, God will be pleased with you because you did not give in and that you fought the good fight. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your love that you give us today. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We know, dear God, that there are so many in the world that are given in to the ways of the weeds. Uh, they are crossing paths, Lord, that they shouldn't cross, doing things they shouldn't do. And God, we know that as we have harvested many fields, that, Lord, the weeds can be such a problem. And, Lord, so uh, much a, a hurt on the fruit. But we know, dear God, that you said that in that last day of harvest, that the weeds shall be bound up. And, Lord, those are the good fruit shall be brought into the barn. And so, Lord, I pray that we're part of that good fruit. But, Lord, help us encourage those who are living in sin to turn from their everlasting ways before it's too late. And, dear God, we'll thank you. If there's one here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, dear God, they submit themselves to you in this hour that they may know the true love of the merciful God. And I thank you and praise you, Lord, for letting us plant seeds. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our invitational hymn this morning is uh, number 171. Again, we always give an invitation. If you have a need this morning to come and pray, whatever it is, God always stands ready to receive you. Number 171. There's something about that name. I invite you to stand. Number 171. Thank you. 